Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our Mass today is for the memorial of St. Cecilia. Um, although a church was named after her in Rome from the 4th century, we don't know very much about her. And from the 16th century, she was, the patron, she was named the patron of uh, musicians. Our Mass, is, our Mass today is being offered for the repose of the soul of Stella McAuliffe, whose uh, today is the 20th anniversary of her death, and um, Gundi Marino, Roli Parento, and the souls in purgatory. So we ask that Stella, Gundi, and Roli are speedily brought into God's presence, and mercy and consolation for their family and friends. Remember all those souls in purgatory especially those who have no one to pray for them. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations with the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us each year with the feast day of your handmaid, Saint Cecilia, grant, we pray, that what has been devoutly handed down concerning her may offer us examples to imitate and proclaim the wonders worked in his servants by Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and and ever. Amen. Our reading. Thank you. A reading from the prophet Daniel. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched on Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with some of the furnishings of the temple of God. He took them away to the land of Shimmer and the sacred possessions in the treasury of his own gods. The king ordered Aspenaz, his chief eunuch, to select from the Israelites a certain number of boys of either royal or noble descent. They had to be without any physical defect or good appearance, or of good appearance, trained in every kind of wisdom well-informed, quick of learning, suitable for service in the palace of the king. Aspenas, Aspenas himself was to teach them the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them to a daily, daily allowance of food and wine from his own royal table. They were to receive an education lasting for three years, after which they were expected to be fit for the king's society. Among them were Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, who were Judeans. Daniel, who was most anxious not to defile himself with the food and wine from the royal table, begged the chief eunuch to spare him this defilement, and by the grace 
of God, Daniel met goodwill and sympathy on the part of the chief eunuch. But he warned Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king. He has assigned you food and drink, and it sees you looking thinner in the face than other boys of your age. My head will be in danger with the king because of you. At this, Daniel turned to the guard whom the chief eunuch had assigned to Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He said, Please allow your servants a ten days trial, during which we are given only vegetables to eat and water to drink. You can then compare our looks with those of the boys who eat the king's food. Go by what you see and treat your servants accordingly. The man agreed to do what they asked and put them on ten days trial. When the ten days were over, they looked and were in better health than any of the boys who had eaten their allowance from the royal table. So the guard withdrew their allowance of food and wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. And God favored these four boys with knowledge and intelligence in everything connected with literature and in wisdom. While Daniel had the gift of interpreting every kind of vision and dream. When the period stipulated by the king for the boys training was over, the chief eunuch presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king conversed with them and among all the boys found none of none to equal Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they became members of the king's court and on whatever point of wisdom or information he might question them, he found them ten times better than the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, you are blessed, Lord, God of our fathers. Glory and praise forever. Bless your glorious holy name. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. You are blessed to gaze into depths. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. Let us now stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Be watchful and ready. We know not when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus looked up, he saw, a rich he saw rich people putting their offerings into the treasury. Then he happened to notice a poverty-stricken widow putting in two small coins. And he said, I tell you truly, this poor widow has put in more than any of them. For these have all contributed money they had over. But she, from the little she had, has put all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. We have an account, Luke's account, of Jesus seeing the, the widow put the two small coins into the treasury for our gospel today that just we just heard proclaimed. So it invites us to recognise or to be challenged about our generosity. But I wonder if you've ever had someone do something nice to you and you've said thank you to them and they say, oh, don't worry about it, it was nothing. Perhaps even you have said it yourselves. I know I have. 
I think humanly speaking, it's really easy for us to want to sort of downplay our efforts. We want to downplay what we've done. We don't want to sort of uh, big note ourselves. Like we think that that's somehow a, a mistake or wrong. And that may very well be true. But part of the danger of sort of downplaying our efforts is that we can't acknowledge everything or all the ways that we make contribution to God and that we can serve others. Because from the little she had, she has put in all she had to live on. She left nothing back from God, from offering, her, offering what she had to God. And for each one of us, we are invited to recognise that. And each time we celebrate as a martyr, you and I are invited to recognise or to, to reflect for ourselves about that challenge. It, it is perhaps easy to say we follow God when there's hardly any consequences, that we believe in our Lord and Saviour when there's no consequences. If someone's got a gun to your head, what's the answer? And in part, we're invited to recognise it should be the same answer regardless of the consequences. Because once again, this is not our only life. But we have life eternal with God when we are able to follow his commandments, when we're able to give generously of ourselves. And so um, the martyrs help us recognise the reality of that truth. And when we are able to serve God, then God's graces can work in us. Our first reading comes from the beginning of the book of Daniel. And so we hear about Daniel and his three friends. And they didn't want to offend God by eating the food that wasn't um, authorised for God, but by God and for the Israelites. So we're told that they had a bit of a trial for 10 days, just eating vegetables and drinking water and not the wine and the other food from the king's table. It was a risk for the guards, we're told. Like if, if they got sick, they could have been in trouble. And yet we're told that they were healthier, they looked better than all the others, and God graced them with wisdom and Daniel with the ability to, to interpret dreams. As the book of Daniel continues, we hear about the way that Daniel uses that to give glory to God and to witness to the truth. As I said at the beginning of our Mass, we don't know very much about St. Cecilia. But her name is recorded in the first Eucharistic prayer as in among the martyrs. And so St. Cecilia invites us, challenges us to ask ourselves, what am I willing to give for God? What am I willing to give up to be a follower of Jesus? And in, in part... That answer is going to be multifaceted. But we're invited to recognise that as St. Cecilia was willing to give her life for the Lord, then we can ask for her intercession that we too may be able to be generous with our talents and gifts in giving witness to our loving God. With trust and confidence, let us come before God our Father, praying for the needs of his people. Let us pray for all who exercise the service of leadership in the church. May they follow the example and teaching of the Lord Jesus by carrying out their tasks with humility, patience and kindness, without arrogance or favour. We pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for all who work in social services. May they show compassion and courtesy in their dealings with the needy, and help to bring about a caring community. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us remember in our prayers all widows. May we always be concerned for them in their loneliness and neglect, 
and help them in their most felt needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray that we may not count the cost in our giving, that we may remember that it is not the value of the gift that counts, but the generosity of the giver. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us take a moment for the prayer in our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers we make as we wait in hope for the blessed coming of our Lord and Saviour Jesus, who is reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, God, your mighty Father. May the offerings we bring in celebration of Blessed <coughs> Cecilia win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Cecilia, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember your servants. Remember your servants and all here gathered, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, will they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, 
and blessed Joseph, his spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night, on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Stella McAuliffe, Gundi Marino, Rolly Parento, the souls in purgatory, and especially all those who remember through this month of November, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostle with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, lest of those called of the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on Blessed Cecilia a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant we pray through the power of this sacrament that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I have the people who are going to give communion the stick to come forward now, please? As you take communion, trust your brothers and sisters, may I share God's word with them, our love and concern, especially with the Eucharist. May God keep you safe in your journey. May God bless you and all those whom you visit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for so beautifully participating in our Eucharist this morning. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. God bless. Sure.